everybody, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed, where we talk about medical topics you guys wanna hear about. Today, what we're gonna talk about is we're going to talk about respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. I'm Dr. Jay Rutland, you guys know I'm a pulmonary, critical care, and internal medicine physician, triple board certified. So today we're gonna to talk about the top five things about RSV. Respiratory syncytial virus is a leading cause of lower respiratory tract disease in young children and elderly people. It is one of the most common respiratory viruses. In fact, the most common viral etiologies in pneumonia include RSV, influenza, and the common cold virus, rhinovirus. Let's talk RSV, its structure, function, and the way our immune system responds to its presence. Here's what's interesting about RSV. Over 65% of infants are infected by their first year of life. By two years of age, nearly 100% of children have had at least one infection with RSV. Half of those have had two. People, including kids, present with cough, wheezing, congestion, and shortness of breath, and RSV is responsible for 60,000 in-hospital deaths annually in children who are under the age of five. When looking specifically at the United States, it has a similar burden to the non-pandemic influenza A for the elderly and high-risk adults. We have created vaccines for RSV in the past, but some of these vaccines led to enhanced disease. Yes, that's a real thing, just not with the COVID vaccines. RSV is an enveloped negative sense single-stranded RNA virus. It belongs to the mononegavirilis order, pneumoviridae family, and pneumovirus genus. The pneumoviridae family also houses metanumovirus, which also is a major pathogen in kids. The structure of respiratory syncytial virus is fascinating to me. On its membrane, the F protein, G protein, and SH protein are present. They are essentially responsible for attaching to our airway epithelial cells, fusing with our membrane, and allowing the genome components of the virus to enter our cells to make more virons to infect other cells. The viral genome has 10 genes encoding 11 proteins, three of which I already mentioned. Other proteins combine to make the viral RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. These are the L proteins and the P proteins. And some proteins have antiviral capabilities. That is, they allow the virus to stay alive longer. What you see in our body is the cytokines responsible for revving up the immune system to clear virus are type 1 interferons. RSV is NS1 and NS2, which will tone down the interferon response and inhibit the infected cells from killing themselves. All of this leads to viral survival. Due to the virus essentially blocking a Th1 response, the body's Th2 response increases, leading to the production of TSLP, interleukin-4, 5, 13, and 33. These cytokines look familiar, don't they? They're the same cytokines involved in asthma. In fact, children with a history of severe RSV infection are more likely to develop wheezing and probably asthma, and there's been thought this contributes to the development of severe asthma down the line of their lives. The power of immunology. Due to the significant burden of disease and the fact that it can cause this asthma type of symptoms, two important prevention strategies and or therapeutics have been studied and created. One, I've talked about, monoclonal antibodies directed at certain proteins on the virus. The other, vaccines. Monoclonal antibodies bind the fusion protein and are given to infants with risk factors for severe disease, prematurity, congenital heart disease, immunodeficiency, chronic lung disease. And in infants, they were given to prevent disease. In adults, we don't have this. In fact, we don't have any treatments to treat respiratory syncytial virus. That's why it's very important for vaccines to be created. And in fact, they have been created and they're all about to be released. It's going to be for adults who are probably over the age of 50 or over the age of 65, because what the vaccines do is they prevent severe disease. Remember, a vaccine allows the immune system to recognize certain parts of the virus, so that way it can build its army before the infection is actually present. So you recognize infection quicker, you clear it quicker, you don't get the activation of that cytokine response, and you're probably not gonna develop those severe wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, and mucus production type of symptoms. In fact, when you look at the immunology of this, as I mentioned previously, the cytokines lead not only to inflammation of those bronchioles, causing asthma type symptoms, but it also leads to a significant amount of mucus production 
and it also leads to the sloughing off of that airway epithelial membrane leading to airway obstruction. You got mucus, you got epithelial cells obstructing that airway, not allowing you to breathe comfortably. In the hospital, when a patient presents with RSV, I am using a respiratory viral panel to separate out whether or not their symptoms are secondary to influenza, RSV, or SARS-CoV-2. Very easy to order. For SARS-CoV-2 and for influenza, I have an antiviral management strategy. I can use PO pills to treat them. For RSV, I got nothing. All the more reason for vaccines and for potential monoclonal antibodies to be created and used in adults who have significant risk factors for severe disease. That is, adults that have immunodeficiency, adults that have chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease, those seem to be the adults that are most often affected by severe disease secondary to RSV. When you look at the burden of severe disease, it's on the order of influenza. You get about 14,000 deaths a year from RSV. With influenza, you get anywhere from 12 to 48,000 deaths a year. You get 2.2 million symptomatic infections a year. So again, what I wanted to discuss today was the importance of RSV and why it's important to develop treatment strategies for adults that include the creation of effective and safe traditional vaccines. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. Hit that subscribe button. We're back. We're better than ever. We'll see you next time.